All right, so this week in Organic Lab, you're going to be performing simple and fractional distillation so that you can separate a mixture of two compounds with differing boiling points. In a distillation, your lower boiling point liquid will get distilled first and the higher one will remain in the pot. The main difference between simple and fractional distillation is the introduction of this piece of glassware right here, which is called a fractionating column. It's particularly hard to separate a mixture, that have, uh, a mixture of two compounds that have close boiling points and the general threshold is 30 to 40 degrees Celsius between the two. So you use a fractionating column which has a lot of divots on the inside that increases the surface area and encourages uh, vaporization and condensation on the sides. Basically what happens is the vapor that's produced down here will gradually separate into the only the uh, lower bo boiling point, uh, low lower boiling point solvent and will come down and con uh, condense on the other side. So the general overview of this apparatus is we have the heating mantle on the bottom which is connected to one of the red outlets over here that has a dial on the side. It has to be connected to the red outlet and then you have the, boil, uh, the pot that has the, dis um, the solvent on the inside that you're intending to distill, then your fractionating column, your Y joint on the top which is attached to your thermometer, and then you have your condensing column, and then you have your output and then your distillate collector on the side. So for a simple distillation, the only difference in the apparatus is removing the fractionating column. So you literally take the piece out, shift it all up, and you have a very simple apparatus to work with. So just going from left to right, uh, first and foremost, whenever you do a distillation, you need to make sure that you always have a vent to the atmosphere, which what I mean is there's got to be a hole somewhere in the apparatus for the air to get out because when you heat something up, it'll expand and then you'll build pressure if you don't have a way to let the pressure go. In this case, you, all of this is contained, but there's a hole right here where the distillate comes out, and so you have a hole in the apparatus. You have to make sure you have a hole somewhere, otherwise you're creating a bomb, because that's what you're doing. You're building pressure until it explodes. Uh, Dr. Hamilton or one of the TAs will check the apparatus before you begin your distillation, so before you start, you need to get one of ours attention to put it all together. Make sure you did everything correctly. So to start over here, on the piece where you have connected, the dial modulates the temperature of the heating mantle by adjusting the amount of electricity that's supplied to it. So basically, as you turn up the dial higher and higher, you're making it hotter and hotter. So this is how you're going to control how hot you want your stuff to be. Don't immediately turn it to 100% when you begin your distillation because you will cause crazy amounts of heating and that's not good. Take your time, be patient, slowly ramp up the heat to get it to the boiling point and you won't have any problems. All right, over here, this is your heating mantle, which is connected, you can see it. Normally you'll have a little bit of sand in the bottom to have good contact between the heating mantle and the pot itself, and so the sand will be shown to you when you get into lab the day uh, of the lab. You can ask the TAs if we forget to tell you, but I figure we're going to tell you because you need it to do this. Um, when you're actually performing your distillation, you need to adjust the amount of heat that's going to it so that your distillate produced on the side is about one drop per second. If you do it too fast, you're adding too much heat and you're not going to generate uh, a clean separation between the two, and if you're doing it too slow, well, you're going to be here forever, and that's good for knowing. Um, regarding the temperature through the thermometer, you need to make sure that the bulb on the side is halfway down from the inside of the condensing column. This is important because the, uh, the thermometer on top measures the temperature of the vapor, and you need to know how hot it is at the moment so you can actually take good data. So if you put the bulb up too high, you're not going to get an accurate reading on the vapor temperature, and if you put it too low, it's going to be too much. So you need to make sure it's in the optimal position, and of course the TA or Dr. Hamilton will check before you perform the distillation. Um, as you perform the distillation, you need to keep an eye on your temperature because this is important. About every five milliliters or so, including when you start at the beginning, you need to take the temperature of the apparatus using the thermometer at the top. When you do so, you're going to get a plot of points that look something like this. You're not taking as many points as necessary, so it's not going to be as clean, but you need to keep an eye on the temperature of the apparatus because that will indicate where you are in the distillation. As the fractional gets closer and closer to the point, you see that it maintains a constant temperature and then quickly turns and almost makes a vertical before it equalizes again. If you remember from general chemistry, if you are heating up a solvent that's not boiling, you're going to show an increase in temperature, but once you, uh, once you reach the point of a phase transition, all of the heat will then be supplied to for perform the phase transition. And so you will have no difference in temperature. That's why it's flat at the beginning. You're boiling all the solvent and all the heat is going into that phase transition. Once you reach the point that it starts to rapidly increase, you've obviously, that means you've lost all of the stuff that's boiling off, and you need to stop the distillation because you're going to try and start boiling off your higher boiling point solvent. So you need to keep an eye on your temperature. 
The next part up here is the condensing column on the side. This is also important when you're performing your distillation. The principle of this is you're flushing cold water through the inside of the condensing column to turn the vapor back into a liquid, and you need to make sure that you have this entire inside filled with running water. You don't need to have Niagara Falls running through it, you just need a little bit to keep it cool. So you have to make sure that, this is very important, you need to make the water come up through the bottom and then out through the top. If you send it through the top and through the bottom, you're going to get just a trickle of water on the underside, which won't cool anything off. If you force it from the bottom up, it will encase the column and cause everything to be fully just encapsulated in the water, and it should condense very well. On the other side, you've got your out, and you have something like a graduated cylinder that you can easily keep an eye on the volume that's in there. All right. The last thing about this is, is there's one missing cat clip. These are called cat clips. These are the pieces that hold the thing together and you need to have them on there to ensure you have good closure, uh, which will be one of the things that the Dr. Hamilton or the TAs will check because you have to make sure that it's closed or you'll lose product. Uh, the cat clips are the, the size you need are the yellow or the caramel colored ones, and we can provide them or show them where you are. You don't need the red ones. The red ones are too big for this size of apparatus. Um, the last piece I said was this one here. It would normally go right here, but the reason I left it off is because there's one more thing you need to consider. You need to make sure that you have a way to get this and this separate from the rest of the apparatus easily because first you will assemble the apparatus before you put the stuff on the inside. So you need to have a quick way to drop it out, put your stuff in, put your boiling chips in, and then put it back together. So that will be here. Additionally, if it gets too hot or it flares up and you need to take the temperature away quickly, you can uh, undo the screw back here and drop the whole thing off leaving the pot behind and it shouldn't continue over boiling because you drop the system off and you're not supplying heat anymore so that's why this is elevated and the same thing uh, is the standard for a, si a simple distillation because you need to create good separation so again the only difference between simple and fractional is the loss of the fractionating column which in this case if we wanted to turn this from a fraction to a simple i would drop the pot and drop the mantle and i'd take the piece off and shove it all back together and it'd be about right here would be the all the entirety of the distillation